What's up? Hey, today we are doing a TMI talk postpartum edition answering your juiciest questions about what happens in the weeks after having a baby. I am currently right around eight weeks postpartum, so I'm sure we will record a follow-up to this video somewhere down the line. But if you are new to this series, because at this point it is basically a series on my channel, I will link our other TMI talk videos down below. I am not judging, I am just as nosy. But before we get into it, I want to say a huge thank you to Seed Daily Symbiotic for partnering with me on today's video. The Daily Symbiotic is a two-in-one prebiotic and probiotic, which if you haven't heard of seed where have you been i was taking this before my pregnancy i took it through pregnancy i'm taking it now that i am postpartum and breastfeeding and what we love about seed is it has the standard benefits of taking a probiotic like ease of bloating as well as supporting regularity having a regular pooping routine was very important to me throughout pregnancy but it goes beyond that because it's formulated for total body benefits one benefit that may be of particular interest if you are pregnant or breastfeeding like me is that it also supports micro nutrient synthesis as well as gut function to ensure that you are extracting the maximum nutrition from your food. So if you want to check that out for yourself, I will put a link down below as well as a code to save 25% off your first month supply. Normally it's only 15, but they're doing a promo right now, limited time only. So all that info will be down below. With less known time of being pregnant, how has bonding with Bean Bean? Okay, so I love that we've taken to the nickname Bean. I mean, at this point, we almost exclusively call her Bean at home. So it's more of her name than her actual name. But in terms of bonding, while I didn't have a traumatic birth or pregnancy experience, I wouldn't say like I had a pretty straightforward pregnancy once I found out and my birth I would say was pretty straightforward as well. Um, I would be lying if I said it wasn't traumatic finding out I was pregnant in the way that I was. And I had trouble saying that when I first made my pregnancy announcement video on here because I just had so many feelings at that time. And one of the big feelings I had kind of outside of the everything I was dealing with internally was when I went to share the news with other people, I felt guilty expressing anything except absolute joy and like I'm so blessed to have this pregnancy that I didn't even know about because I know so many women struggle with fertility and it's not even a thought that would cross their mind of having like an unplanned pregnancy. So I really struggled sharing how I was impacted mentally during that time. And because of that, I was actually very nervous about how I would bond with my baby. So something that really worked for me or I think really benefited me was I was in therapy throughout pregnancy. One of my number one concerns was bonding with my baby and forming a secure attachment with my baby. And I knew in order to do that or in order to put my best foot forward in doing that, I had to do a lot of work on me. I had to quickly try to come up to speed mentally so I could make that transition into parenting. So very glad I stayed in therapy. I think it did ease that transition for me. And I guess like in non therapy talk, like technical terms, I don't know what you want to call it, but the way that I have made my peace with that experience in my mind is that yes, it was traumatic. Yes, it was terrifying finding out I was pregnant at six months. I did not feel ready. I've talked about this and I think some of the other TMI talk videos, but nobody will ever get to experience those feelings as intimately with me as Bean did. And this may be me going like woo woo off the deep end. I feel like that's really been, I've, I've really gone that direction since having a baby, but we shared energy for so long before I even knew of her existence inside my body. And so as much as it was scary, we will always have that connection before she even came earthside into being. Oh, I sound like such a hippie. <laughs> what is your libido like? Any sign of a return? So it never really went during pregnancy. I'd say things just started to get more geometrically challenging toward the end of pregnancy because, you know, there's, there's a belly between you and doing certain things. I'll also reiterate, everybody's journey is unique. I feel like I can't say this enough times. And there's already so much pressure on women and whatever your body is doing postpartum that like don't use comparison to put more pressure on yourself. You need to do what is right for you. And you will know when you are ready to get back to it. So I was raring to go most of pregnancy, I would say. And immediately postpartum, I mean, yes, I just went through a very significant event. So like the day after, no, I was not trying to get back at it, but I very much so bought into the belief that like once I got the okay at six weeks, I would be 
I think when I was thinking about that six week mark post baby, I forgot that I also had a newborn baby because I thought it was just about getting the okay from the pelvic PT and then I could do my thing. But when you have a newborn baby, at least in my experience, that baby wants to constantly be with me. And that is a bit of a barrier to entry, if you get what I am saying. I want to, it is not a lack of wanting to, it is finding the opportunity to do so. And then also being in the mood when the opportunity arises. One thing I have definitely struggled with postpartum is switching between modes, going between mom mode, working mode, like productivity queen mode to then like sexy mode. And it's not that I don't wanna have sex. It's just that I am overwhelmed. I only have so much energy and making that switch isn't easy for me. It's something I'm gonna continue working on because like, I do want to do that. It's not that I don't want to, it's just like, I want to enjoy myself when I do. I was so eager to have sex again. Did you feel that way? So I'm gonna build off that other question. Immediately after giving birth, no. I don't know if anybody is. There is just so much that you are feeling. But the first week when I was starting recovery, something I remember really looking forward to toward the end of pregnancy was as much as I loved the belly, Physically, when I was trying to be intimate, I wanted to like be able to actually hug. Like I wanted to be able to be physically close. And when I had the belly, it was like, there was always this space. So I was looking forward to being able to move differently and be closer physically. And something I really struggled with in those first couple weeks is that I don't think I was prepared for how much baby would need me. I had it in my head that baby you can just put down in the bassinet and they will sleep and they'll be okay to do their own thing, which was not the case for me. So I pretty much always had baby on me. And I know some people talk about getting touched out. And while I didn't necessarily feel touched out, I did crave a different type of touch. I did crave a touch that didn't need me, but that was caring for me and that was providing me with comfort. So yes, I started thinking about sex again, but I also wanted hugs. I also wanted kisses. I also wanted to cuddle and be physically close. Things that I had some limitations with toward the end of pregnancy. Any advice for juggling baby and a biz. Don't. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I think a, a traditional mat leave would not have suited me. I think I would have gone crazy and I, it would have been even more isolating taking time fully off of the work that I do love doing. But had this been a more planned pregnancy, I definitely would have done some things differently. Part of why I did plan my birth in the way that I did and part of why I did so much preparation for birth was because I knew I was not going to be able to take much time off and so I needed to have as good of a recovery as I could, which this is not me complaining. Like I would have done it the same way regardless. I honestly, there's not much I would have changed about my preparation for birth beyond just hopefully having a planned pregnancy next time and having more time to maybe mentally prepare. I gave myself two weeks after having baby to slow down, let things slide, not be in my inbox constantly. And then after those two weeks, I started holding myself accountable again. And it was overwhelming. It's still overwhelming. It is not easy. I have tried to drop my expectations of how much work I can realistically be doing, but the reality is I always want to do more. And because I didn't have a ton of time to prepare, I, I do have to do more. And that's okay too. Not everybody is going to have a traditional mat leave. Not everybody's going to be wanting a traditional mat leave. I think it's okay if you are somebody who maybe is a little type A to still want to do work in some capacity or Maybe you want the complete opposite. I think whatever you do is okay. But if you are self-employed, I will say one, try to have a planned pregnancy. Two, try to get ahead or at least structure your projects and your expectations and deliverables for when you have your baby to be at least 50% less than maybe what you're currently doing. And just give yourself grace as you are working to get into a routine because it is challenging and you're not gonna make it any easier by being hard on yourself. Are you pumping or planning to do so? Yes, so I started pumping rather early as I've learned in the online scheme of things or in the online opinion of things, which I will just say before we go any further, I have learned that breastfeeding is an incredibly personal journey 
there are a lot of opinions. There is a lot of judgment when you go down some of these like first time mom rabbit holes on the internet. So just remember that fed is best. If you are feeding your baby, that is what's key. You ultimately have to find a routine, whether that is exclusively breastfeeding or breastfeeding and supplementing or going just formula or doing whatever you have to do. Like you have to find a routine that works for you and your baby that doesn't result in you being in absolute agony or really struggling mentally. So I started pumping relatively early in the scheme of things. I think it was maybe around two weeks. I had an electric breast pump. I wanted to try it out. I wanted to see how it worked. I thought it would give me security mentally knowing I had a little bit of a backup stash in the freezer. So that's what I started doing. What I have settled into with as a routine, I guess, is mostly breastfeeding. She's usually on my boob when she's eating, but I try to pump first thing every morning as that's when I find that I have the most and I can just kind of set some aside for either later in the day or put it in my stash in the freezer. I like pumping because to me, it is freedom. It is freedom if I have to go out and leave her with someone else. Somebody else can confidently feed her, can have enough to feed her. It is also freedom from stressing if maybe I do get stressed or I do get sick or something happens to me and my supply drops off I know I have that stash as a backup plan and something that was actually really helpful with pumping for me earlier in our breastfeeding journey it was when she was going through some of her earlier growth spurts and she'd be getting really fussy sometimes she'd just want to use the boob to comfort herself and so she'd be like suckling at it but when she's doing that for like hours at a time you know your nips get kind of like chapped and not like I don't think mine ever cracked but they get really achy and it's nice having the option of pumping and bottle feeding when your nips just need a break. What changes in your body stayed after birth? Again everybody's journey is unique that applies to like the changes that you see but also how long it's going to take your recovery post-pregnancy. So the changes that I noticed immediately after having baby like literally within the first couple of weeks after giving birth was I did end up getting that dark line down the middle of my belly. It's not super dark on me because I'm super pale, but basically whenever there's any sort of marking on my body because I am so pale, it's very noticeable, which I'm gonna put a picture on screen. It's like probably not that noticeable to you guys, but I notice it because you know, I always see my body. So I have a little line that kind of extends out from around my belly button, which makes sense to me because my belly really was stretched to the limit. My belly button is a different shape. I feel like it's deeper than it was before. And kind of that skin around the belly button definitely feels a little bit looser. It's not like it's completely different skin that feels like foreign on my body. It's just like, yes, there was very much so a baby that was growing there and was really extending out, pressing out on that part of my belly so that makes sense to me but even compared to how that skin and how that area was immediately after having baby I can feel that it is gradually returning to maybe not its previous state but like it's feeling more normal it's it's weird to describe because I'm not expecting it to go back to how it was but it's changed since giving birth beyond that not much has stayed that I had during pregnancy. There have been some new things that I've been experiencing, like because I took so long with my recovery postpartum, I didn't get back to weightlifting, for example, and I shouldn't say so long. I took an appropriate amount of time for my recovery. I do feel like I've lost quite a bit of muscle. I just noticed like less definition all over my body. And I've also noticed that I all of a sudden have combination skin on my face. I have been getting the worst dry patches like randomly on my cheeks, no matter what I do. I've tried different moisturizers. I've tried different exfoliators. I've tried like manual or whatever it's called exfoliation with like mitts and stuff. I've tried facial peel acid things. I'm not very good at skincare, but I've tried some things. My skin is not behaving right now. I see you handling life with a newborn so easily and I'm afraid I won't thrive like you. How do you do it? I'm not thriving. I am surviving. I am doing my best every single day and I will say something that does bring me joy and that has been making me happy lately is I finally feel like I am getting into some sort of a routine. And when I say routine, it is not like a, I wake up at this time every day, I do this and I do this and I do this and it's all programmed to the minute. That is not how the routine works for me. I have had to seriously 
adjust my expectations of how much I can be doing. I have had to switch from daily to weekly to-do lists. There has been so much going on behind the scenes that you don't see. Like remember, as much as I do these TMI talks and as much as I try to be transparent with you guys about this journey, there are many less glamorous parts of the day that you don't see when I am struggling. I also never want it to seem like I am complaining because even when I'm struggling, I have so much gratitude that I get to be present with my baby, that I have a baby, that I get to be at this stage of the journey because this won't last forever. I have a lot of feelings. I am overwhelmed most days and I'm okay with that too because I know that that is part of this journey. That's part of learning. You know, you get overwhelmed with one thing. You kind of find a way to deal with that thing and something new comes up and you figure out how to deal with that thing. And I'd be lying if I said I wanted everything to be easy. I mean, I think that problem solving, I think that struggling is part of what ultimately makes life worth living. But don't be fooled. Life is definitely often a mess lately behind the camera, behind what you guys see. I just try to show the positive sides of pregnancy and of parenting because I feel like so often it's only the negatives that you see on social media when really it's just a whirlwind of an experience and there are things that are hard and there are things that are rewarding and fulfilling and the feeling that you get when you figure something out and you get to take like that next step forward with your routine is so rewarding. So maybe I could show a more balanced view. I'd say it's still mostly positive, but yes, it is a mess. I am doing my best to keep up. Maybe an accurate way of describing it is like, I feel like right now life is a carousel and I am trying to jump on it, but it is going too quick for me many days and I keep worrying that I'm going to get hit by something. So that is how I feel. It's fun. It's chaotic but we're figuring it out. That is it for today's video. I feel like this is a quickie and it pains me to cut this off there. I did put a poll up in my IG stories like, would you guys listen to an hour long TMI talk? Which I feel like is me really just asking, would you listen to a podcast? I don't know, I need to stop committing to so many things, but I really, I would love to do a podcast. I would love to chit chat for longer with you guys. So maybe let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I think I am gonna end up doing a part two to this video though, because you had so so many questions so I'll keep you posted on my IG stories if you want to check out the C daily symbiotic I mentioned at the start I will put a link in the description box down below like I said it's 25% off your first month supply right now it's a limited time promo so get in on that all the info will be down below otherwise thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video